Light up your build with Hue Plus by NZXD. It fits into 2.5 inch drive slots, comes with 4 individually controlled RGB strips with plenty of connection cables for best routing, and is wonderfully controlled through the CAM software. Get 10% off at nzxd.com, link in the description. When people think of mirrorless cameras, things like the Panasonic GH4, Sony's A6000 series, or Canon's M5 just come into our minds. However, Fujifilm is making a huge stride in the area with some of their newest cameras. Those shots were beautiful, weren't they? You just watched a short little montage fully shot on the X-T2. Like its bigger brother, the X-Pro2, this is one of Fujifilm's flagship mirrorless cameras, and it's also the successor to the very popular X-T1. Even though Fujifilm may be one of the less popular mirrorless camera brands, the body alone runs for around $1,600, but if you add the 18-35mm f2.8-4 lens with OIS, you'll need to add an extra $300 to your budget. For the time being, there's one lone optional accessory that you can add onto the camera. It's the vertical power booster grip that costs $330, and it enables Fujifilm's new feature called Boost Mode. Uh, this maximizes performance by a slight margin and can also boost battery life. Uh, for example, you get 11 frames per second of high continuous shooting versus 8, the EVF refresh rate boosts to 100 frames per second from 60, the camera autofocuses a lot quicker, you'll also be able to record 4K video of up to 30 minutes versus 10 minutes without the grip, there's also improved performance for shooting interval, shutter time lag, and blackout time. There's a reason why I'm mentioning this grip so early in the video too. Uh, I'll be sharing my thoughts about this camera with the grip on because I'll be honest, this is a great add-on for the X-T2. First of all, I have large hands and the grip complements my pinky fingers very well which makes it super comfortable to hold the camera in the first place. Second, if you are into portrait photography, you love taking pictures with the grip on. Uh, when you're composing shots vertically, the shutter dial, the shutter button, access to quick settings are right there at your fingertips. The grip can also hold up to two batteries, but they have to be purchased separately and without them, you'll lose the performance mode feature. If you have two extra batteries, charging them is as simple as plugging in the included power cable to the DC connector. Unfortunately, it doesn't charge the battery inside the camera, so you'll have to detach the grip, remove the internal battery, and go through the whole process of reattaching the grip, so be mindful of that. On a positive note, all the buttons on the grip function as they're supposed to without the batteries. If you decide to shoot video on the X-T2, you should consider the grip because it's the only accessory that comes with a headphone jack which the body lacks. Let's move on to the camera now, and right off the bat, I can tell you this thing is built like a tank. Thanks to its magnesium alloy body, it's solid and weather sealed. Uh, I also appreciate the compact design, plus the whole setup, including the kit lens uh, and the grip, weighs less than 4 pounds, so it isn't too difficult to lug around, at least for me. Speaking of lenses, take note that the X-T2 uses an X-mount system, and there are no electronic adapters in the market now, so if you intend to use uh, your Nikon, Canon, or Sigma glass, you'll be disappointed. Taking a physical tour of the X-T2, the power switch is wrapped around the shutter button, and I enjoyed the convenience of turning on the camera and capturing the shot within just a few seconds. There are five mechanical dials on the top, and these will be hugely appreciated since you won't have to run through menus to change many key functions. You can adjust ISO sensitivity of up to 51,200, the drive dial switches between movie mode, bracketing, high-speed burst, low-speed burst, 
single frame, multiple exposures, advanced filters, and panorama, which is a pretty cool feature. And judging by these shots, each of them obviously performs exceedingly well. Moving on, there's a shutter speed dial, and right beneath you'll find the metering dial. Next to it, there's an exposure compensation dial. Lots of dials that you can play around with, and I think it's more practical to have these right at your fingertips. You'll also have the ability to lock the sensitivity and shutter speed dial by pressing the dial lock button. This can come in very useful for certain situations. If you prefer an alternative option to adjusting the shutter speed, you can program that function to either the front or the rear command dial. The scroll steps are well defined, plus you can cycle through pictures during playback. I have the shutter speed adjustment program to the rear dial, and if I press it, I can punch in to check focus, which can be very useful when shooting video. And what's amazing is that the exact same settings is replicated to the dials found on the grip. Excellent job, guys. As for ports, you'll find a 3.5mm microphone input, a micro USB 3.0 slash 2.0 connector, micro HDMI port, and a remote release connector. There are dual SD card slots that can be set up as a backup, raw JPEG, or sequential configuration. The menu system wasn't too difficult to navigate around thanks to the omnidirectional stick on the back, which can also be used to shift focus points. If you're coming from a DSLR, you'll easily get used to the menus quickly. The electronic viewfinder is excellent on the X-T2 and provides spot-on color reproduction. It replicates the exact same information from the LCD screen, and I ended up using it all the time, especially in broad daylight conditions. Being able to assign frame guidelines, electronic levels, and adjusting settings within the EVF is always appreciated. The only time I never really use it is when shooting video, and that's where I take advantage of the 3-inch LCD screen that can be tilted in three directions. To be honest, I would have preferred an articulating screen like something found on the GH4 that would have made my life a lot easier shooting video and photos. Perhaps we could expect this in the next revision. That being said, the screen is sharp and bright, colors just pop, and I can tell it's a lot better than my C100. The X-T2 packs a 24.3 megapixel APS-C Trans CMOS 3 sensor, coupled with the X Processor Pro engine, which helps achieve faster autofocus and continuous shooting of up to 14 frames per second in boost mode. Speaking of autofocus, it's fast. I mean, really fast. Judging by these results, you can tell tracking is excellent throughout the sequence. It brought back memories of me using the 5D Mark III, and I'm surprised at how mirrorless cameras have come along, especially considering this compact form factor. Picture quality was just stunning with great dynamic range and vibrant colors. What you're seeing here is coming straight out of the camera, unedited. The f2.8 aperture on the kit lens uh, at 18mm resulted in some beautiful shots with a shallower depth of field. The sensor can also handle higher ISOs without a problem. I was able to push it to 12,800 and still achieve great imagery. This is the first mirrorless camera from Fujifilm to support 4K video recording of up to 30 frames per second. The HDMI port on the left side of the camera outputs a clean, uncompressed 8-bit 422 signal, which can be paired with an external recorder that supports 4K. There's also the option to output Fujifilm's new f lock color profile, which should result uh, in a much flatter image and better dynamic range. This can only be done externally, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to test out this feature since I don't own an external recorder. The lack of recording Full HD at higher frame rate is also limited as it goes only up to 60 frames per second, so prepare to say goodbye to slow motion video. I can go on and talk about the downsides of the X-T2 when it comes to video, uh, like the lack of built-in image stabilization, a limited amount of picture profiles to choose from, and I wish they had the f lock profile built into the camera. That being said, the footage that comes out of the sensor is incredible. I've never owned a 4K camera before, but just judging by these shots, there is a great amount of detail and excellent dynamic range, given the bitrate is at 100 megabits per second. This is an excellent start for Fujifilm into the video game, and I'm genuinely looking towards future Fujifilm cameras. It's not a low-light beast by any stretch of the imagination compared to the a7S II or the a6300, but the footage is totally usable and I wouldn't hesitate using this as a B-cam complementing my C100. Now to answer your question, should you buy this camera? It really depends on the type of work you do. I'm not an expert in cameras nor am I a professional camera reviewer, but I can tell you this. 
The X-T2 is a solid camera for photography in general, especially if you want a compact setup to lug around that can get the job done really well. The mechanical dials are hands down the best part about this camera, and given the outstanding EVF, this is definitely worth checking out. If you're strictly looking for a video camera, this might not make the top of the list compared to competing mirrorless cameras like the GH4 or the upcoming GH5, or even Sony's latest offerings. There's also the price and the ecosystem to take into account. If you're trying to switch from Canon or Nikon, you're only limited to mounting Fuji lenses, so that might end up being an additional cost. But if you've owned a Fuji camera and if you're looking for a robust upgrade, you should seriously consider this. It's that good. And so that concludes my experience using the X-T2 for the past few weeks. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll admit I still haven't covered every bit of this camera so please don't consider this to be a full dedicated review video. Uh, I'm sure there'll be so many professional photographers out there testing out the X-T2 to its absolute best. But judging by the results I've shown, um, what do you guys think about this camera? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Ebro with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.